gentlemen, it's time for me to review Thor Ragnarok. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Thor. Ragnarok. So Thor Ragnarok is directed by Taika Waititi and the film stars Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, Mark Ruffalo, and Kate Blanchett. So Thor Ragnarok tells the story of Thor who was out on the search for his father after what happened at the end of Thor the Dark World. While on the search, him and Loki find out that they actually have a sister by the name of Hela, who is the goddess of death and she wants to rule Asgard when Thor and Loki find themselves in this colorful planet known as Sakaar. While they're in Sakaar, Hulk is actually there. So now that Hulk is found, Thor wants to take Hulk with him and Loki along with this new character named Valkyrie to go up to Asgard and stop Hela from her evil plans. So I was of course very excited for Thor Ragnarok. This is no question one of my most anticipated movies of the entire year Marvel has been killing it this year with their MCU movies I really like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 I love Spider-Man Homecoming and I was hoping Thor Ragnarok could continue the streak of being this positive MCU movie because they really have been hitting it out of the park this year as far as how I feel about the Thor movies Thor is actually right there with Iron Man 2 as my least favorite in the MCU like if I were to really break it down I consider it the second weakest Marvel film Iron Man 2 being my least favorite in the MCU Thor The Dark World which I know gets a lot of flack I actually really like that movie now when I reviewed Thor The Dark World back in 2013 I gave it four out of four stars I would not go that high I would say the movies three out of four stars which is still a very fresh rate so don't think I'm saying that like it's a bad thing. Three out of four stars is still a very fresh rating. I do like Thor The Dark World better than the original Thor because it actually felt like a Thor movie. And with Thor The Dark World, I can just say this, I think this is the best Thor movie. With the first film being eh, okay, and the second film being solid, a legitimately solid movie, and now this one actually being a great movie, I can actually say each Thor movie in this trilogy, I can call it now, has gotten better and better and better. Let's go ahead and start off with the performances. Everyone, I truly think, does a great job with this film. Chris Hemsworth really... He is Thor. He embodies his character. You could tell that he is very passionate when it comes to his character. The passion really oozes on screen. And he, he's just truly great as Thor. He knows his character at this point. And just seeing him on screen was so great. And this might be the best I've seen him as this character. This movie really takes Thor to the next level. As far as the character goes, they really take him to the next level. He is truly the God of Thunder. Now, one of my issues with the first Thor I might address is the fact that once Odin takes away Thor's hammer in the first film, it doesn't feel like a Thor movie anymore and the movie becomes really um, underwhelming. Granted, some funny moments that happen when he's on Earth, but ultimately, it was just not all that interesting. However, Thor Ragnarok, even though it's not a spoiler, but Thor's hammer does get crushed. He no longer has the hammer because Hela destroyed it. Even though he really does not have his hammer for the majority of the movie, this somehow still felt like a Thor movie. And that's something the first Thor really, really missed the mark on. But in this film, they somehow made it work. It still managed to feel like a full-on Thor movie, even without the hammer. And it managed to fit the storyline for what they're going for, too, because... The storyline is like, okay, is Thor really Thor because he has a hammer? 
Thunder, or is Thor Thor because he is the god of thunder? I loved how the movie addressed that. As far as the god of thunder goes, man, do they really show him as the god of thunder. Thunder, which is something I really did love. This movie handled Thor very well, and just once again, Chris Hemsworth truly is great. They really nailed that so well in this film. Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Is it really a surprise when I say that he is fantastic too? He is so, so good in this role. Just like with Chris Hemsworth, as Loki, he really embodies this character. When I see Thor on screen, I don't see Chris Hemsworth, I actually see Thor. And when I see Loki on screen, I don't see Tom Hiddleston, I actually do see um, Loki. And before I even forget, the brother relationship in this film, you know, the bond between Thor and Loki, the, their whole dynamic, uh, that was very well written. And this might be the best their brotherly dynamic has been. That's saying something because in Thor Dark World, that's one of my favorite things about Thor Dark World, is similar to here. The brother dynamic, that was truly, truly great. You do feel the bond between these two brothers, even though they're both opposites, and they do address that in this film, you can tell that they truly do care for one another, and that's no different here. That was very well realized. I was very impressed by that, and Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hilston, they really made that relationship work because of how natural they felt. Mark Ruffalo is Hulk, Bruce Banner, mostly Hulk in this film. He is so, so good. In this film he truly is fantastic and when he is Bruce Banner which isn't really for that much believe it or not but when you do see Bruce Banner of course he really does nail Bruce Banner very well I really liked him a lot and of course one of the things I was looking forward about this film was the dynamic between Thor and Hulk it's not just the dynamic between Thor and Loki but we also get moments with Thor and Hulk and it is great it is so great to see these two bonds especially considering these are the only two Avengers that did not appear in Captain America Civil War and it makes sense why they weren't in Captain America Civil War but to just see these two on screen together and have this back and forth was so great it was so engaging and not to mention it's very funny too and I'll get more into the humor later on with the film but their back and forth truly was great in this film and as far as that goes i was not disappointed and that gladiator fight between thor and hulk that was not disappointing at all that was hands down one of the best scenes in thor ragnarok that entire fight was exciting it was funny it is just what you want in a fight between thor and hulk and seeing that on screen was so refreshing and it just put a huge smile on my face. Someone else I want to bring up is obviously one of the new characters and that is Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. What a great character, and surprisingly, a rather funny character. I was not really expecting that. Like, I know this movie plays more as a comedy, but I really was not expecting her to be like this funny. She actually had some very funny moments. The interesting thing about her character is, as funny as she is, you could tell she's a broken character, and I really don't want to say why, but there is this flashback sequence. By the way, one of the most impressive flashback sequences I've seen in a film, period. But this one flashback sequence just told you everything you need to know about her character. And honestly, from the way she was acting towards Thor, you could see why she was acting the way she did because stuff went down in her past and you have a lot of sympathy for this character and you could get behind her. Next up is Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum is freaking great in this film. He is so, so awesome. I mean, what can you expect? This is Jeff Goldblum we're talking about. This guy is the king of all, 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 all. It works for Thor Ragnarok, especially for the kind of style this film is going for. But Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster, he is truly great. He's definitely not a nice guy, but for some reason, for someone that plays, I guess, technically a bad guy, 
he's somehow a likable bad guy. It's really weird. I don't know if it's because of how the film is written or because of how well Jeff Goldblum can act when it comes to basically being himself, but... Either way, consider me impressed. I was not disappointed with Jeff Goldblum. Taika Waititi as Korg is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. He is so great as Korg. Almost every time Korg shows up, I'm laughing. Almost every time because this character, really, he's not only just funny, but he's just so likable. And you kind of want to give him a hug, too. Whenever Korg just says, hello, you want to come along or something? Like, you can't tell, but just want to hug this guy. He just has so much personality to him. Taika Waititi adds so much life to this character. And I did love seeing this character for every time he showed up on screen. Taika Waititi just brilliant job. And then of course I have to mention Kate Blanchett as Hela, the goddess of death. You could tell that Kate Blanchett on screen was having a ton of fun. There's even a few surprisingly funny moments with Hela considering she's supposed to be this menacing antagonist. I thought she was great as Hela. Now as far as the character goes, of course I'll get more into that really, but when it comes to just how Kate Blanchett acted, she did great. And any other performance I may have forgotten to bring up, um, they're all really great. Like Idris Elba, I did really like his role in this film. I thought his role was very interesting here. Carl Urban shows up in this film and I did think as far as his performance goes that he did do a very good job. Anthony Hopkins, as always, as Odin, he does a really good job. And now let's talk about the style of Thor Ragnarok because Taika Waititi, he's a very comedic director. Now, I have not seen What We Do in the Shadows. I did not have time to watch that film before seeing this. However, I did see Hunt for the Wilder People, and I will just say this, I love that movie. That is one of the best movies of 2016, but... He did such a great job directing this film. He really brought me into this atmosphere. He was the right director. It was a nice change of pace for this trilogy, especially considering most people consider the Thor movies to be some of the weaker films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So for Marvel to bring in Taika Waititi to direct a film like this, I think was a smart move. And Taika Waititi does not disappoint when it comes to his direction. This is a beautiful directed movie. There's a ton of wide shots. When the characters are talking, it's great. When there's an action piece going around, and let me just say this, when there's an action sequence going on in Thor Ragnarok, it is truly fantastic. This is a very colorful, energetic, and just overall fun movie. Being comedic too, but also being serious when it needs to be serious. And Taika Waititi has come out and said how this is improvised 80% of the time. Like 80% of the movie is improvised. There's really no script. The actors, you know, they're the ones that, that's doing the improvision. And if that's really true, then consider me impressed because it did not feel that way. The actors came off so naturally. I think it's because the actors, even the newcomers, really understood their characters, or maybe they're just so good at comedy that them improvising something is not a problem for them. Like, I, I find it hard to believe that this was improvised because, man, it felt like that they were still telling the story, but through the script rather than what comes out of the actors' mouths. That's really impressive. And for the scenes that are scripted, those are very well done. The cinematography, like I just said when I was talking about the direction, this is a very energetic, colorful, fun movie, and the cinematography really adds to that. So many bright and beautiful colors throughout this film that just put me in such an Oh, like this movie legitimately blew me away because of the colors. This is by far the most colorful Thor movie. This is the most fun Thor movie and it is different 
from the first two Thor movies. Taika Waititi was going more for a comedic tone with Thor Ragnarok. It plays more as a comedy. And I will say most of the time, the comedy really made me laugh. It made me laugh a lot. It made the audience in my theater laugh a lot. And I will just say this. I saw this movie twice in theaters, guys. The first time was with my family. The second time, it was with my best friend, Mr. J. And both those times, the audience was laughing. The, the humor really is spot on. And like I said, considering this is improvised, this is really impressive. I was laughing so much with Thor Ragnarok. It offers the fun level that you really need in a world like this. And you even do get some cameos, which I will not spoil. One cameo in particular I know most people are already aware of because articles have already come out and said that this certain cameo was going to be in the film. But, you know, out of respect for those that may not know, this certain cameo that we get around the first 15 minutes of this movie that cameo was so great and i thought for uh, what that cameo delivered he offered his little purpose to the overall storyline the storyline i thought was just very engaging to taika watiti knows how to blend comedy and drama very well but something i am surprised about and that same thing could go for the mcu movies people don't really discuss how dark these movies can be because yes this is a comedy movie there's a lot of comedic bits but there are some moments where this film gets really serious not serious to the point where i'm no longer having fun it, it, there, there's a right amount of serious here but this movie does get serious and it does get dark and there's one particular moment which i won't spoil of course that I did not see coming. The score too, let me just say, the score in this film works. Because whereas in the first two Thor movies, we're used to hearing the more epic kind of scores. In Thor Ragnarok, however, the score is full. 80s. It sounds like the 80s. And something that was very refreshing too is that in the teaser trailer for Thor Ragnarok, we hear Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song. And most of the time when you hear a song in the trailer, it most likely does not play in the movie. Very once in a while that happens, but not very often, unfortunately. However, I am so happy to say that Thor Ragnarok is not one of those movies because not only do they play the Led Zeppelin song Immigrant Song once, but they played it twice. Twice in this entire film. And both those times that they used that Led Zeppelin song, it was so, so cool. And not to mention that this is just a visually stunning movie. I mean, Marvel is known for having some very incredible visuals and Thor Ragnarok is no different. Now, as far as flaws do go with Thor Ragnarok, as I did say just right now, the majority of this movie is visual eye candy. It is so visually beautiful. But there are moments where, a few times at least, it is a little noticeable in terms of its visuals and in terms of its green screen. There's a few green screen shots in this film that were noticeable. The most noticeable one, and it was so weird, was of course once Thor throws his hammer at Hela. Hela's just holding the hammer before she just completely breaks it. That one green screen shot, that was so weird because in the teaser trailer, they were at a different location. Yeah, that was definitely the most noticeable green screen shot. And there's a couple of others. Besides that, the green screen's very well done here and just visually I think it could have been polished better although the humor is hilarious and I can't stress that enough this really is a hilarious movie there's a few times where the humor felt out of place I'm not gonna deny that there's a few times in this film where I'm like that didn't necessarily belong in the film it did come off as forced and for my final flaw with Thor Ragnarok I have to say that Hela Kate Blanchett, great as his character, but this character herself, I didn't really feel like the movie did much with her. They didn't really take full advantage of this character. Compared to how strong the villains were for the MCU this year in 2017, I was expecting more from this villain. In the climax, Hela is the villain I was 
hoping she would be. She was intimidating, she was menacing, she did some stuff that made me go, oh crap, but leading up to that climax, I didn't really find her that impressive a villain. I didn't really think she did much. And as far as Carl Urban's character goes, he's definitely not a bad character, but I think they could do, I think they could have done more with him too. Like, I do think it's cool how they wrapped up his character arc in the climax. That was cool. But similar to Hela, I felt like they didn't really take this character to his full advantage. And even some of Hela's kills, which I'm obviously not going to spoil, but the kills that she has come out of nowhere. That's where visually a couple of times it did look pretty obvious there too. Overall, Thor Ragnarok is the best Thor movie I've seen. This is what you need in a Thor movie. It's fun. I love following these characters. Each of these characters had their time to shine, whether it's comedically or dramatically. These characters had their time to shine. It is beautifully directed by Taika Waititi. The writing, when it is actually scripted, is very well done. The action sequences are exciting and just captivating to watch. I personally feel it succeeds at being this fun, great movie, and I do think it's personally one of the best movies that the MCU has to offer. I'm going to give Thor Ragnarok three and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know, what did you think about Thor Ragnarok? This is 20th Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!